Hi everyone, and welcome to week two of English 123 Advanced Composition. This week's lecture and assignment is about writing an essay titled Arguing a Position. So the objectives of this week is to review last week's assignments. How did you do on your research? How are you doing with your bibliography entries, writing them in the correct order, citing them in your writing assignments, and then a grammar review. If you have any questions or you feel like you're struggling on anything that we did last week, it's very important that you email me or get a hold of me right away so that we can make sure that we're moving on in a successful way. Week one is really critical to get down. How do you cite parenthetical citations in your essay and then how do you list your sources correctly at the end of your research papers? All of your papers this week or this course will be research-based papers so you need to know how to do this um, properly. Weeks two and three and four will go on to arguing a position and cause and effect essays. So this week is a controversial issue paper. We call it arguing a position but it's also very much a controversial issue paper. For your assignments this week, you have a few things due. <clears throat> There's going to be a quiz on the reading. You'll read chapter 6 of the St. Martin's Guide and chapter 19 and then chapter 26 which is using the sources citing in your paper of how to support your arguments while writing your paper. Chapter 6 and 19 are writing with arguing a point. So those are important to read. The quiz will be on the reading. You will have a 10 point discussion board where you'll practice analyzing a position. And then you'll have your journal, which is all of your pre-writing, and then your 100 point essay, which will be due by Sunday at midnight, the end of this week. In Blackboard, the little journal entry here, this is where you submit your journal entries. You can submit as many as you want, and I would encourage you to start early. Don't wait until Saturday and Sunday to submit all your journals. The earlier you start, the better I can see with how you're progressing on your paper topic. How's your thesis? Are you on the right track? So please submit often and submit early, and I won't grade them until Sunday when they're due, but I, it does allow me the opportunity to respond to you, to comment, and give you feedback, and we can have an ongoing dialogue as you're writing your paper. When you do your journal entries, you click on that journal and it'll take you here. And you click here where it says create a journal entry. You, s you can see here by these bullets, these are all of the entries that you should be writing on in your journal. Um, these are not long, these are, can be very brief entries, um, but they should be specific. And it'll come out to a 20 point assignment. So. It's about three points per assignment. I think the first one will be two points for brainstorming where you just list your possible op uh, ideas for what to write about, and then about three point each for the rest of these entries. So as long as you submit for each of these entries, you should get full credit. I will not grade for grammar and spelling or anything like that. It's just some free thinking and brainstorming for you to get your thoughts down. When you submit your quiz, it's gonna go here and this covers the reading in the St. Martin's Guide and the Writer's Brief Handbook. And then you have your paper prompt you'll see here in Blackboard. I'm in week two's learning activities is where I am. So you'll see your paper prompt here and this says for this week's assignment, arguing a position, you're going to write a three-page essay where you will write about an issue where there's a disagreement and you're going to take a clear position and back up your position with specific reasons and evidence. Okay, um, we'll get into this more a little bit further in the lecture, but you need to be thinking about what is an issue where there's definitely uh, argument on both sides of the cause. And you don't want to have a, a large issue, you don't want to have a really small issue, it's just something just in the middle that you can get three pages in on, make your point in three pages and wrap it up, and enough that you can find research. You are going to have to support your point. You're going to have at least three sources cited in MLA format, and at least one of your sources does need to be a book. The other one can be um, online sources, but try to keep them 
somewhat current, maybe within the last 10 years would be um, my ballpark range for you. Your works cited page will go at the end. That's not part of your three page count. So please keep that in mind. And you will want to make sure that this paper is done in enough time to submit it to Smart Thinking for some online tutoring. So preferably by early on Friday, you will have this paper done so that you can send your rough draft to Smart Thinking, which is our online tutoring, and get some feedback and enough time to make some revisions and then submit your final draft by Sunday. Here's where your final draft goes next to this green check mark. You, you submit that final draft document there. Remember that is an online submission. It cross-references through the whole database of the university. So it checks for plagiarizing, uh, copying of other papers, copying against your own papers, anything like that. So it's very important that you um, do that properly. There's, there's another uh, little link down at the bottom that tells you how to utilize the smart thinking tutoring and what that can offer you. Okay, so let's get into this first essay. Arguing a position is the topic. It's also known as a controversial issue paper. Um, so as we go through the elements of this assignment, I've provided for you what percentage of this assignment is, is part of the grade for the rubric. Okay, so a well-presented subject is your topic, your overall topic, and how well you introduce it to us. Kind of your introduction paragraph, we could say, is this 10%. So your, inner, your, your issue, it must have something where somebody disagrees with you. Okay, if there's no disagreement, then there's not a point to this. There's nothing to argue. Okay, Smoke, smoking is harmful to your health. That's my example. I'm pretty sure you'd be hard pressed to find a lot of people that would disagree with that and say no smoking's great it's good for you <laughs> okay so there's no point in arguing that we all agree with that that that's a problem okay you want to pick something that you maybe already have some foundational knowledge about you don't have to be an expert on this topic or it could be something that you want to learn more about but you also want to consider the scope of your topic. It can't be something too big, you know, the death penalty, euthanasia, suicide, uh, abortion, suicide, all those things are, they're really big and they're really uh, overused. So try to be unique in your topic, but not too broad, not too narrow. Can I solve this issue, make my point and support it and argue the other side in just three to four pages? Okay, so my, my position further on into your introduction, another 10%, right away, what is your position? That means I think that this issue is wrong or I think that it's right. You need to be uh, clearly on one side or the other. You cannot be wishy-washy, you can't be on the fence. Well, it's good in this case and it's not good in that case. You can't be a neutral party. You have to have an opinion and be very clear about it, okay? When you state your opinion in your paper, you want to avoid qualifiers like I think or I feel like or I believe. Okay, just state it as if it is. This is wrong for several reasons or this is a great use of taxpayers' dollars, whatever the issue is. Um, you don't need to say I think, I think this or I feel this because obviously you do think it because it's your paper and you are the one writing it. Uh, and when you're thinking about how do I phrase this, how do I write my thesis statement, I would cons I encourage you to make a question, maybe a yes or no question, like should this or that be allowed? And then what you do is you turn that into an answer and there you have your thesis statement. Okay, moving on to the body of your paper, this is 50% of your grade. This is where you support your position. This is where your research comes in your three sources or more. Uh, each supporting paragraph will include a position statement, which is, again, your, like a specific reason of your opinion. We know what your opinion is, but you have to have reasons why. So you could, you could have uh, a topic sentence for each of your body paragraphs that says, well, this reason for this is this, and then you follow it up with your facts, your statistics, your research, any evidence. Remember when you're citing your sources and you're adding in, you know, according to the author so-and-so or this book or this study, it's really important to 
qualify why that why that source is, is relevant to your issue. Who is that person? Don't just say according to Susie Smith. Okay, who is Susie Smith? What does she have to do to add uh, to your paper? How is she credible? So make sure that you give a little bit of information about where, how that source adds in to support your reason. Um, a new part of the assignment, which is sometimes tricky for us, is to address the counter arguments of your cause. So when we say you're writing an issue where somebody disagrees with you, what you need to do is you need to put yourself in that person's, the person that's going to disagree with you. You need to think of what are their issues that they're going to uh, fight me on. What are they going to disagree with? And you need to address them in your paper. And I know it's probably going to seem counterproductive because you're trying to plead your case. How am I going to address the other causes, but it's actually, it adds to you as a writer, uh, it adds to your credibility. So you need to consider what the opposing viewpoints might be, and then address them, but then refute them. Okay, so you'd say, you know, well, you might think that um, it's a waste of taxpayers' dollars to spend it on X, Y, and Z, but let me tell you why that's not the case. And then you go back to your point, and you reiterate it, and further build your case. Okay, Some might believe that um, whatever the issue is, you know, putting kids in sports is um, harmful to their academics and their growth and their development, but really, and then you go back to your point. Okay, This is a sample of, and it goes along with the handout that I've provided for you, possible format for how to lay out your paper. This is not anything you have to go by. This is for people that need help. They need structure, they need guidance, like what goes where in a paper. I don't know how to organize my papers when I'm writing. This is for you, okay? Merely a suggestion. Don't forget you want to start your introduction, your thoughts, maybe lead into your issue, lead into your thesis statement. Just kind of get us warmed up and then end off with your position and your thesis. Second paragraph here, start off with the transition, you know, first of all, and then generally write supporting reason number one. And then the rest of that second paragraph could be your supporting evidence, your research, your statistics, your facts, comments on them. And then you have another body paragraph with another reason why I feel this way is, same thing, back it up and comment on it. A third body paragraph, a third supporting reason with your evidence and comments. Then, you could go into your refuting the other side. Okay, some people might think that uh, da 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 da, and you refute that reason. Perhaps add in more research to back up why they're wrong and you're right. If you need to do it another time, you could use another paragraph or not. And then you have your conclusion paragraph. You summarize your thoughts. You make it personal, but then you make it global. Okay, why is this matter to you? But why should it matter to the reader? Why should it matter to society? Why should it matter to everybody? And then finally, you'll have your works cited page listed in alphabetical order. This is a copy of the rubric that's provided for you in the PowerPoint. So you can take a look at that and see how the assignment will be graded. Okay, I've gone through all of these elements. The last 10% is just the grammar. Um, this is supposed to say three pages here, it's okay, um, but spelling, all of that stuff, MLA format. Here's your prompt, looking at it one more time, three page paper about an issue where there's disagreement, MLA format, three pages, three sources, at least one is a book. What do I do? How do I start my essay? I've provided some slides for you, you can go back and look at them in the PowerPoint when you want to have more time but just some ideas for how to get your essay started. You know, tell the story, ask some questions, an interesting quote, set a scenario, just imagine, that, you know, put, put us in a picture of something going on. And this is some really important helpful pages for uh, if you need help, the St. Martin's Guide will help you with this. Possible topics, okay, I've listed some topics for you, things to look at, thinking about where there's issues of disagreement. And in order to succeed, please plan ahead. Leave yourself plenty of time. Don't submit all your journals at the last minute on Sunday in case you're not on the right track. 
proofread everything and ask me for help. Thank you.